Yeah, Andrew, I, I'm not sure that I, I understand the, um, your question about resilience, but I, I think I do. Um, let me just say, uh, there, the U.S. military has been looking at the commercial satellite and launch service industry for years. Um, I think there's a realization within the U.S. military that the current system that they have for procurement of satellites, for procurement of launch services, um, isn't, isn't really working so well. It's, it's too expensive. Um, they, uh, the U.S. military has many, many more satellites that they'd love to launch, build and launch, but they can't because um, they don't have enough money to, uh, to get them up there at current launch prices with the limited number of launch vehicles that, that ha they have available to them. I mean, uh, U.S. military satellites uh, generally have launched on, uh, on uh, Delta, Deltas or, or Atlases uh, in general. Uh, you don't see them being launched by Protons or, or Ariane's. Uh, now they're being launched by Falcons uh, at a much cheaper cost. So this is good for the U.S. military. They'll be launching a lot more satellites. Um, the, uh, the U.S. military is also looking very seriously um, at uh, hosted payloads, obviously, putting their uh, imaging payloads or communications payloads on commercial satellites uh, that are going to geostationary or going to low Earth orbit. Uh, these offer some incredible uh, advantages in terms of pricing and also flexibility, getting your payloads up there very quickly when you need them. But remember that there is a certain culture within the U.S. military, and that culture isn't going to change overnight. Uh, the U.S. military is a very conservative culture, and they basically want, uh, they, they want uh, cheaper prices. They want the flexibility to get their payloads up there, but they also want control. And so at some point, they're going to have to uh, compromise, uh, and, and that process is happening as we speak, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to develop very, very slowly. But I think ultimately in the future, the U.S. military is going to become much more liberal uh, in the way they procure launch services and uh, how they um, uh, develop and, and build their satellites and uh, where they put their payloads, uh, because what they want is um, uh, affordability and they want timeliness. I think that leads uh, nicely into the, the next topic area, uh, again, similar to the first panel, in terms of uh, how the government realistically uh, can participate in a positive way uh, to capitalize on the potential development in this small satellite market um, if it's there. Um, so as, as you've said, right, that there is a, there is a, a standard government approach. Uh, I, may, I would maybe say uh, especially in the space area. Uh, the government tends to be fairly traditional in all areas, but I would say maybe especially in the space area. But on the other hand, as you point out with Falcon, that this is one of those areas where surprisingly enough, uh, the departure from the traditional model has happened. It's not just underway, it's, it's actually happened. Uh, and we have a uh, commercial launch services approach uh, being done 